It is Heavy Things Lightly, Uncle Seth edition. We talk, how do we know if a law is good? We talk and ask you to vote. Yeah, we wonder if this podcast and its listeners would vote for a certain cadaver or not. Yeah, we talk about that. We talk about what it is and what it means to be an originalist. (laughs) Apparently the pine tree flag comes up in this talk with my full light person, nihilist friend, Uncle Seth, my dear friend who, well, he he poses challenges for the old world thinking people. This is Heavy Things Lightly. Come to the Art Automata. We might have some local tickets still for Washington. And then Florida in November. We have Jordan Hall. And guess what? We have established that our secret guest will, in fact, this year, once again, be Jonathan Peugeot. That is in Florida, 25 of us hanging on the beach. Reach out. Check out our website. Put on the links. Love it. Gaggy Marshalls. Guys, it's Uncle Seth. Seth, if hey, I everybody. was, guys, it's Uncle Seth. He's our resident. If you, if we, we have new listeners since we've seen you. It's been a couple months at least, guys. For new listeners, this is our resident naysayer to old world things. He's essentially an atheist who is going to bounce around and at moments seem like not an atheist, and you're going to get confused. But he's an atheist. I think we can go there. Are you? Yeah, I think you could say that. That's fair. All right. If you don't like that, I put words in your mouth. How would you do it right now? Uh, You are not or you do believe in a God. God. No. But you do believe perhaps maybe that there is good in the world. Wow. Really light start to this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Hi. Hey, can we do some uh, pleasantries first? Okay, (laughs) let's do it. Guys, uh, we always start with a toast because, I don't know, uh, all the other interviews I do, I love, love, love. But with Uncle Seth, it's like, actually, I feel, except for the screens and the fact that I'm sitting on a pillow so I can actually pretend to be taller than I am, (laughs) it feels like uh, we're just hanging out. It's been a while. So, Seth, um, I'll I'll do the toast, if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Um, I would like to be, I'd like to toast to all things we've been given um, in our lives to, I would say to the glory of the creator who gave us life so that we can just take a moment and just like, I'm thankful for this microphone that gives me a chance for you to hear me and just for all the things around me. And for every moment, I just want to give gratitude for those things. Gagi Marjos. Gagi Marjos. Gagi Marjos. That's the Georgian tradition, of course, guys. If you're new to the pod with Uncle Seth, we always start that way because it, contrary to popular belief, Uncle Seth is fun at a table and he's hilarious <laughs> and he's gotten into <laughs> a few <laughs> fights. Believe me, popular belief <laughs> is that, obviously, popular belief is that it's not fun. <laughs> so where does the popular belief come from? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I'm thinking of one particular table in a, in a place called Lake Mills, Wisconsin. There was yes. a moment when Uncle Seth, actually, it wasn't even your fault. Things were going fine. Oh, I had but- a great time. By the way, I want everybody to know I've, I have a great time at all the tables and enjoy. You do. You do. You know. You want to, you called me to say, I think it's time we try to figure out what a law is, how it works in the old world and the new world, which I love as I was, I don't want anybody to judge me for this. Um, I was driving home today. I, I have Sirius funny. XM. I am plugged in on some level to the world. And uh, there was no. You know what? You're on the grid. I'm on the grid. I'm on the grid. Look, I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. People are on the grid. My brother's on the grid. I don't want to hear about it from you guys. <laughs> I don't. I don't. But here's the thing. I was listening to like, Sirius XM. Popped around top of the hour. My favorite thing is top of the hour. Hit Fox News hit cnn just go back and forth top of the hour and you you understand everything in like eight minutes <laughs> right. and you're done it's all the it's, headline screaming that's it that's it and you're gonna get a ton of trump and then you're gonna get a ton of israel and palestine and then you're gonna get 
old people being challenged. They're going to lose their money because somebody's coming at them and then you're going to get somebody feel super offended. Most, like, most likely a minority. <laughs> yes. Minority are coming for people's land. And then on the other channel is someone super offended. <laughs> somebody, don't they know what they're doing? They don't care. Shut up. So here's the thing. I heard today, Uncle Seth, uh, your man, Anderson Cooper, <laughs> maybe he's not. Yes, your man. that's our guy. That's your guy. That's our liberal that's, guy. That's your guy. He's so cool. But he was uh, um, maybe not that cool, but he's fine. <laughs> he's a good journalist. He's a, he has integrity. Uh, by the way, Don Lemon's gone. I used to have freakouts over Don Lemon. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, that was the boogeyman. That was the <laughs> liberal you news gotta, boogeyman. You got to admit, he was. Yeah, not great. That's not another great. combo. But so yeah. he said, let's take a look at how the the jury is figuring out right and wrong in this case against great. Trump. Yeah, let's hear about that. <laughs> it was amazing Ooh. because they were talking about how jurors in the past in these kind of cases have come to understand they actually had a juror on, which I got to give them credit. They didn't just tell you what to think. They actually had a juror talk about it. It was fascinating because the juror was like, I had my mind made up until I read the laws, which I couldn't understand. So we took three days uh, to understand the laws. And I was like, well, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, no, no. Your mind this got changed because you started to read the laws. That's fascinating. So you and I are trying to figure out what's a law. And my guess is, is you're probably not too comfortable with the way laws come down. I mean, are, do you do you like the United States Constitution as a set of laws given by some higher force or higher? Well, obviously not given by a higher force. I appreciate that it's a good um, uh, framework f to, for which to run a country. Uh, but what happens is, is there's such a fear to change a law that that's where I think these originalists are full of S H I T. Yeah, no, I'll say it. Believe say, it. Yeah, you say Believe it. it. You say stuff. I said it. Uh, <laughs> By the this way, this is ridiculous. You don't care. <laughs> 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 like, that's a mark of your, how badass you are. I don't I care. Said, <laughs> no, but seriously, the original. I'm on here to swear, people. For all the new people, I'm also on here to swear to show you, people you know, like that how. Sodom and Gomorrah, on my side is we're cussing. That's what it is. That's what I mean. We're just watching this great pod with uh, Sister Anastasia. She was talking about things demonic, and I learned a ton, and I believe all that. And now it's me and me and the demonic guy. We're hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you're not. You're my lovely friend. But here's a question: How do we know? How do you know? Like how to know and recognize a law as? good okay and i'll give you mine too but okay it's not easy uh, how stuff. do how, how do i know a law as good yeah like here's one a law that definitely applies to you it's out there is something like you have a type of freedom to say things that come to your mind regarding the government and yep. no one should be able to stop you at or here's another one you can pack heat if you want to, as long as I don't know, you're right, right, recording right. to Here's local. the thing. And this is what I just don't love about uh, uh, the people who I'm against on law and the people I'm, who I'm against on religion. No offense to everybody on this uh, <laughs> by podcast. The way, by the way, that's yeah. the only problem. Is I love the people who listen to our podcast. They probably 98% of them believe in God. And then there's you. Here's the problem with you guys uh, and the law people. I love it. It can't be absolutists we we see what the frame is okay don't uh uh and, and to be honest it, it, let's go straight to the heart of the matter um your people were the ones that were saying who was it uh oh my god lot lot remember uh lots, oh, salt, salt pillar lot old school yeah old testament lot uh, yeah oh. old testament yeah so lot his didn't his daughters get him drunk yeah, a lot of uh, bad and, stuff. A lot of yeah, lot and that's of... what I'm saying is, is that the law in those cases seems to be able to change at uh, certain people's whims. But God forbid we talk about something that 
these dudes wrote in 1784 or whatever that is now supposed to govern who I am. And it is 2024, man. And so hmm. if, if there are absolutes and likewise, and what's going to happen with faith, Christianity, uh, but faith already is that this re absolutism refusal to understand what's happening uh, in our March evolutionary March, you know, what we're ready for, what we're capable of, whatever is going to spell its own doom. So in that sense, we have to be more attentive to what we're becoming so that our laws can You have can to be match. able to, you have to be able to, uh, I don't want to say manipulate. That sounds bad. Like manipulate law. your own evolution? No, I thought we we're talking about law. Well, that's what I mean. So if, is there like smart people, maybe it's yes. everybody, but there's smart <laughs> yes. people who can, notice that this law is outdated we need to be prepared for who we've become by making new laws is that how you feel uh generally i'm i'll i'll back that up and so don't think i'm not i'm not trying to challenge you i'm trying to figure so, yeah i want you to challenge me so there's a type of rationalist out there I, i'm putting rationalists into the wind yeah that's fine they, they might not be reasonable but let's or maybe they're like i don't know they're really good at cults, but there's some leadership faction that's good at anticipating the need for a new law and how do they make some new laws? I think one you're thinking of would be like, really, we're still trying to do abort, like let women choose. You might say that, right? I definitely say that. And so there's something about a group of people who go, you know what? This is sort of barbaric that we force a woman into having a baby and can't we get this law changed? What I'm asking is, is how do you recognize that it's time to change the law? Okay. Right. Right. So how would I describe it as good? The original yeah, that's right. You asked me, right. How would I know it as good? Right. Uh, I would know it as good. And by you can douche memorshan if you want. Oh, we will douche memorshan. Uh, okay. And At the possibly uh, get canceled, but go ahead. <laughs> right. We should at we follow that up with some white nationalism and then do some, 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 I don't know. What's the, oh, I know what we could talk about how you shouldn't wear a mask, but is that still going on? What do you get canceled for now? Sorry. I did a sidetrack. I know. Don't go to the mask things. That's so, right, go ahead, go that's ahead. so 2021. I know, but you were kind of wrong about that. Anyway, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> it's not go back, wrong go back. about that. Go hey, back. anybody that's listening to this podcast. You can go back. Oh, Where you, is there please, an archive? Go back. It's in there. You can find them all. Okay. You were trying to say stuff. I don't want to. I don't. What do they say? What's the cliche? I don't want to re adjudicate this, <laughs> but re litigate. Re litigate. I'll tell you. That's it. Well, listen. No, you're going to go down the Shmoreshin. How do we know the law is yeah. good? Go ahead. Stick to How it. do we, we know that law is good? It, the way we know anything is good. And this is why uh, people who don't believe in, again, if I say relativism, you're going to just. My head will stay on. Don't worry. No, Okay. But it has to be to p the people's judgment that it's good. There's and the no, people like, here being something like the, the voice of a collective uh, majority. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Let's put it this way. Do you, um, you obviously think that a law for a shmamortian, even just like blocking shmamortian clinics, or, you know, something like a. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why clinics also needed a. <laughs> no, 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 because if I, if I say clinic, everybody's going to know what we're talking about right no, now. So I'm trying to protect you, man. Well, because I know it's a cancel session. Uh, it's it's not. It's when just, I'm on, when I'm on. A, a, a schlinic. <laughs> a schlinic. If you're at the Schmemorshan schlinic. Okay. Uh, or, I mean, a law that uh, prohibits you from, you know, uh, as I walk in holding up a 
picture of a fetus or some, you know, a dead fetus, yeah. some kind of, mm-hmm. you know. Um, here's the thing. Are you telling me that's that the overriding genius is that somebody 240 years ago said there was an unfettered right to say whatever the f- you want? So, including you, like the if, picture of the of the dead baby. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, or the uh, uh, Westboro Baptist people. You know. Uh, 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 picketing, picketing, um, babies' funerals. Yep, yep. They're coming in with a little coffin and then saying, "Thank God, uh, for this." God hates fags. That's yep. uh, one of their that's a special. Big one. That's, a big one. that's a biggie. That's a biggie. So let me ask you. I think the question is for people. You're asking me, do I think that that law, that that speech is, should be is protected? not good or, 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 or yeah, right. Correct. And do I think that either way? And then, and even more importantly, epistemologically, how do I know? How do right. I know? So how do you know that there's a ultimate right to free speech? Right. That's exactly. a, a, well, i tell you what I don't think is a good way to know. And I think that your people. Guys, we do this. Don't worry. It's not going to turn into a fight. It might, actually. It might. But your people do this, whether they like to admit it or not. They think they're in their head. They think they've achieved some rational clarity through the process of scientific <laughs> determination. But they're actually in their loins. They're actually reacting on the left. And what I it's mean so by funny. left here. No, oh, let me finish, though, because you, yeah, you said Schmamortian. Fine. I, I Schlinic. <laughs> Schlinic. So stupid. <laughs> but I just want to try to say what I and by the way, I don't when you hear left, I don't I'm not really talking about Democrats. OK, I'm just talking about a whole tradition that's now moved into the postmodern era of people making decisions based on something like their desire and, and who I am, my 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 uh, my feelings. All of that stuff. I love this. I love this. All of that stuff is a way to know just the as truth, an aside quickly. But it's a bad just way. as an, an aside quickly. The way you say my feelings, but you would never say my faith. My oh, that's good. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's be well, honest. I'm cool. You, no, hold on. I'm cool with the idea that there has to be a way to come to truth. What I'm trying to describe is anthropology and. In, in, or the orthodox anthropology that says your loins or your passions will push you, your mind, your rational faculties will push you, or your heart will push you. Near your heart, you guys might hear is emotions. But the orthodox theology on this is the heart or the noose is the eye of the soul that sees truth. It sees divinity. It sees things as they actually are. So hold on. That thing opens. It's like an aperture. And if you work on that thing, it opens. And then you, you're no longer rationalizing. And you're no longer feeling. You're participating with the truth. So hold on. This is the ultimate way to come to know whether a law is good or bad. Now, I'm not sure you think that's what I described as true. It's possible, right? Yeah. It's Do you think... There's such an aperture, like an opening, a, a camera lens that yeah, you but possess. I'll tell you, yeah, for sure. Oh, you I do think, think so? Well, well, I shouldn't say for sure, because now I don't want to get pig, pinned down. But it might make, oh, right. I'm not I'm making sense, though, right? I'm making no, sense. No, no. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I okay, what that's what saying. I'm asking. You see what I, I'm saying. Okay, okay. I see what you're saying. Uh, but there, for sure, that aperture is not going to open up for, oh... I had a right to carry a gun. Hmm. It's so stupid. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, these are so worldly. Those types of. Yeah. That's a pretty good argument. You know what I mean? Like, that's where it's coming down. Oh, that a free speech. You know what? We Nobody has free speech. My children don't have free speech. Um, you don't have free speech at your job. With yeah. your boss. Mm-hmm. Let's face it. Nobody's got free speech. So we put these limits on things. Um, and then, uh, like, fight for this as sort of to 
to make up for the fact that we got no nuts at work. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm free, free. Oh, I, mean, oh, I see what you say. People feel, people feel yeah, done they wrong. Compensate. They compensate for this by carrying Because they got sticks. small testicles or something. Correct. Yeah. Correct. All right. Let me ask you, though. All right, that, that that, that's not a bad. Okay. But let me ask you something. I'll do. I'll try to paint a picture. Um, do you think that there's like a? Uh, do you think there's like tectonic plates that that kind of dictate what the stuff we can see looks like? In other words, there's mountains because underneath sure. there's some sort of tectonic. Yeah, right. plate. I think so, but I don't see why you don't think that's evolutionarily. Well, hold the, on. Uh, it could be evolutionary. That's that's fine. But what I'm saying is is the things we participate in see, like above the ground, may be dictated by something even deeper and profound that we don't see. And what I'm trying to say is, is the life of the soul, the life of the noose, the spirit in the East, it's the noose. That thing is seeing the reality beyond what you're calling true. It's beyond the material reality. Now, hold on. And so it's like things end up downstream at the very font. If you're able to see clearly, then the gun law will make more or less sense in light of how reality actually works. In other words, it may be uh, people kill each other. And the reason people kill I each think- other is because of sin. And the reason that people sin is because God allows them to be free. And so, you know what? We might allow people to have guns because they're going to hurt each other either way. Listen, you, uh, what did you say? Just, uh, a minute ago about the people that see the noose well, that, or the that use the noose that use, use the noose. That okay. They're perfect. Aware. Yeah. That's that they're, they're awake. Awakened. People that are awakened. Correct. Mm-hmm. What you're trying to do is just uh, create laws for a society for those people. 99% of society is not those people. Okay. Uh, let's put this, let's put it this way. I get that right there. Right there. Give me a hard <laughs> new world number percentile of how many got the noose. How many that's got, my the new, <laughs> how got the noose? That's your, dude, that's you're, my you're new coining con- things. Chris the that's cans. It, that's my, that's Chris, my, you, he, by the way, guys, he coined Chris the cans. I use it on my sub stack all the time. Christian Americans who are using Christianity. It's a to, sick amalgam. You hate it, don't you? Chris I hate cans. it. I hate him. I know you're not a big fan. All right, go back though to what was it? Uh, What'd you just coin? I'm gonna where were we? Where were we? Oh, oh, how? Give me a hard number on how many people you got think the news. got the news. Got the news <laughs> in in the world. Okay, we so, got seven billion people. All right, great. I'm going to give you a hard new world. I listen, number like eleven. Was, okay, but hold on. <laughs> well, in in, in Orthodox <laughs> Christianity. Well, we'd say one is good, one is good one number. is holy, one is God. So oh. we'd say one has a fully open aperture, actually, and they united themselves. They are one with God. Well, they're God. That's Christ. But hold on. So we would say living in the world somewhere right now is somebody who is able to see in a way that you and I on this dumb podcast can't see. Of course. Of course. Of course. There's many people like that. But, but are we going to make laws? Our laws... Uh, are they the lawmakers? That's the question. I don't, I don't care if they're, I don't, I know, I don't care if they're the lawmakers. As whoever's making the law, are you going to make a law that is, will control, uh, will, will have a, 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 a meaning to 99% of people and be able to have a societal stabilization uh, or stabiliz- stabilizer or gonna go just with those the with the news? The news. <laughs> this is gonna stick because I actually don't hear I know, the I think negatives. This is like me, girls. This is like me, girls. There. Fetch. I think this is like fetch, guys. No, I don't. It's hear not it. gonna work. I wonder, guys, write in the comments for if you're Orthodox. The <laughs> news. It doesn't. I don't. I'm not offended by that. Oh, it's, no, it's no, no, I know it is Danus. exactly. And you better make orthodoxy hit, man. Remember in in that oh, no. movie with with um. Oh my God! With uh, uh, what was that with Ben Stiller? No, sorry, not Ben Stiller. The uh, Ben Affleck, uh, you know his buddy. It was like Goodwill Hunting. 
no, those two dudes. Then there was the uh, Jay and Silent Bob, and he had uh, Jesus. Oh, guys, somebody come up with this. Uh, he's got Buddy Jesus. Everybody just go to Google and look up Buddy Jesus because George Carlin, that's who it was in this movie. George Carlin's got Buddy George Jesus. Carlin, George Carlin was a priest who was trying to make Jesus hip. You know, so oh, and well, Je- I, like soccer Jesus, yeah, I know. Yeah, that. right, right. And so Jesus is like this. <laughs> that's you know? all, like, we call him. <laughs> we we call him Jump Shot Jesus. Because have you seen that shirt, Jump Shot Jesus? It's a killer. I love anybody, the idea, though. Anybody who sees that shirt is like, "That's cool. I need to speak I, to you because you have a problem." Okay. <laughs> What is he in taking a jumper? Oh, you gotta, uh, dude! Google it as soon as you get off the pod. I will. I will. I will. We, in fact, Andrew, put Jump Shot Jesus up right now. Awesome. Andrew, put Jump Shot Jesus. Do up. we have this technology? Yeah, yeah. Well, they'll put for it the... up for us. They'll put okay, it. Okay, good. But here's the thing: Jump Shot Jesus is that thing. But if you see that, if you if you are the follower of Christ, if you're a Christian, and I, I'm going to go Orthodox on this, and you see Jump Shot Jesus, and you don't go, whoa. <laughs> Something's not right. Because <laughs> just is Christianism. This is Christian. I know you're you know? so funny because that's a, a great term. But go back to Danus. Danus. Hey, Danus. You oh, you how how never you give me a number. See how hey people on the listening tonight. See how John always avoids. I'm going to give making, a number. No, I know you are. Wait a minute. Can I? Eleven. Eleven. No, I know. <laughs> Listen, you're going to notice something if you've not had listened to us before. I mean, obviously, John knows what he's talking about. Obviously, um, go. <laughs> but you'll see. He doesn't want to answer the hard questions. <laughs> he next thing you know, he's talking about. Well, that's not true, Seth. In five twenty-seven yes, Byzantine, <laughs> uh, so kind of... dude, slippery wide's like a serpent, bro. Yeah, I gotta, uh-huh. I gotta, it's twenty-nine point three percent of the news <laughs> people. Because you guys want to create this ridiculous expectation. I, you know what I'm hate? Okay, I, I just want to. I'm going on a screed. Deal with it, people. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I love the NBA. I'm watching these guys take a jump shot, and then for some reason, this drives me friggin' nuts. On this, on the actual show you're watching on the screen, is this some? It's like a little bubble that appears. It's clearly a graphic. And it'll say like 27.3 feet. And it'll give you the number of feet that the thing is shot from. So like, like, I don't know, pick it. Luka Doncic is going up and he's taking, I'm like, oh, and then all of a sudden it says, you see the arc. Yeah. And then, and you see the tracer arc. Yeah. Like while it's happening, why is that happening to me? It's a video gameization of, no, uh, no, your people are owning this. It is the, it is the light people love of numbers as if that freaking gives a shit about it's 23.7 oh, feet I see. like why do i uh, it's far you know what how about this it's oh, far my ass. because you guys how about it's far? love that too i'll tell i'll put the, what do we put love it about way. that it's ridiculous I'll, here's what here i'll tell you why let the artist paint uh, listen man. Listen, that is, a, there used that to is be, a red compound at uh guys point. john is posing right now Jeez, I'm pissed. poser alert because right now, John, if I said to you right now, uh, Poser. this guy can ball like a, a, a baller. I can ball. Because John, I know, John can ball, people. I, you wouldn't look, you wouldn't <laughs> you know it so. looking you at him. You so. wouldn't know, you, you would think the exact opposite looking at him. I know. And also, check this out. One of the first times I met John. Because I we, I had moved down. Were to we throwing the teach. football? Is that this time? No, 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 no. I had moved down to teach, and he was down there. And somehow, Florida. like I'd only met you a couple times, and then we you ended were up like on the, the same cool softball new guy team. On campus. No, I was not. You were. This guy's <laughs> like he he went down there to change old change. systems. Change, he's, change the he, systems. He, listen, John went down there and he put the system on trial. <laughs> Done news. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were on a f- softball team, and then oh, uh, yeah. I saw your swing. I, I saw your swing, and also you showed up in uh, shorts, but also uh, 
spandex tights below yes, them. Correct, correct. They're called That's compression shorts, buddy. Correct. Those <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you wish you had them. You're just <laughs> mad because you were like, oh my God, I didn't I don't have my compression shorts. <laughs> I'll tell you something that happened. I've got a good episodic memory. Like I can't tell you, you know, tons of stuff, but things stick with me. This is something that I've decided to keep in my brain because <laughs> somebody was roasting you for the the uh then they saw the swing. Yep, yeah, yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Then they and it was a foul ball. You uh like turned on one hard and and then somebody said shit. <laughs> I remember this dude. Oh, so I can't dude, believe I you remember that, this. I was there then. Listen, night. here's what Seth. Have you guys seen Seth play the play the bass? So funky. So the whole piece gets better when Seth starts playing the bass. I feel but, that way. But that rhythm does not translate to the basketball court. Can we just get that out there right now? It does not translate. <laughs> now, can we get back to what we're talking about? Yeah, what were we talking about? I'm trying to figure out that when your people make a law, is it simply a good law because it's made by your people? No. What makes it, it good? What Shmamor makes it good? For instance, the, the right to have a shmamortion. Why is the only function of a law? Listen, the only function of a law is to help society continue. Uh, okay. Let's face it, and that's the only way we got out of nature. That's the only reason we got out of nature. So, the uh, if you are going to create a law. That, uh, that appeals to the news, the people that get it, the awakened people. That's such a fool's errand. Because, because what you are doing, not, you're doing, creating a people. law that is destabilizing. I see. You have to create laws that are stabilizing effects because ultimately we're just trying to increase uh, or, or continue society. And that uh, well, laws, that's what laws are for. I'm not saying that's the point of life or whatever. I know. I, I get it. it. The law. I get it. So the law, law, that's uh, what is, it's supposed to do. So really that this is, you are right in a pocket of the enlightenment, John Locke. You're doing a lot of Jeremy Bentham yep. stuff, which is. That's the, exactly what I was thinking when I was saying it. No, but you are, Bentham. you're like utility, yeah. utility no. should guide us in the sense that that which makes us you can call it happy, which they did, but not all of the utilitarians. That would make it makes us wealthier, or happier, or more comfortable. Is well, that, listen, those are the things we can tell goodness from. I, I, and and what you and what I think and that, you guys that, always try no. to draw the distinction. You guys are trying to draw the distinction. Oh, it's a law, but God's law is this. You know, oh, this is just the law for man, but God's law says this. So, yeah. This is a law for man, you know, have whatever laws for God you want, then people can to ascribe to them. And those are for the denus. Make those for the denus. But the rest of us are more interested in um, in moving ahead without confrontation. OK, keep. Oh, oh OK, good. That was helpful. Moving ahead without I don't know. Well, let, no, let me, no, 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 no. Hold on. I'm not that. trying to pick you with that. I'm not. I, I actually think it was smart in this sense. Moving ahead, maybe not confrontation is the right word, but moving yeah, right. ahead in a way that provides for stability slash happiness slash. Uh, and, yeah, progress. Pro, that, uh, and, and progeny and progeny and correct, children. Correct. And I know you can get down with that. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the deal. Actually, this everybody, is where, I want to do a quick shout out to children john hears his daughters <laughs> they're all awesome they are oh awesome. my god they're just all killing I, we were close to seeing you in new york doing these i know i'm gonna do it. graduation but we can hey, try again right in in seven days summer seth comes out oh to yeah play okay summer seth summer seth is fun why don't you people who are listening and going to washington for the art of tamana don't get mad at me, but I would like to invite Seth at a fair price. Why don't you come out? Georgie's going to play. 
Why don't you come out and we can even put you on the panel with these cats and we'll all have fun. I don't want to be on any panels. (laughs) Would you come and just hang out and have soup? I'd love to. And meet people? Yeah, for sure. When is it? We'll we'll talk about it off air. Okay. Guys, Um, if he shows up, though, there's 25 people, great speakers. We're doing it in Florida, too. If Seth shows up, though, I mean, will people throw, like, banana peels at him? Exactly. (laughs) Hey, every... Every good organ organizing event needs a this is target. True. This is true. <laughs> we need a target. We need that's why someone that's why I have this. Yeah, I this is why I <laughs> and I think I've told this on this pod before, but I'm gonna do it again. Uh that's why, you know, m- my dream is to be in front of people. Everybody's dream is, and to do two minutes. Okay. Like a two minute because bit. A two two minute set, whatever you can you can do. It could be one bit. It can be uh, like, um, you know, what's that one the one comic Mitch Hedberg? It could be you know just like oh I get it. You, you have you your know persona, I mean? but you have to do this. And with my students, Mitch I do. Hedberg. I you just you just you just dated yourself. Seth is actually like <laughs> he's Methuselah. He's like one hundred and twenty uh, years old. Listen, <laughs> Mitch I got Hedberg. a painting. I have a painting. <laughs> So, um, I actually do my, have my students do this, fill 30 seconds. You have to come up and be able to, uh, do you do that? Yeah. That's a, a, uh, one of the lesson plans I'm leaving. I'll put it on my bulletin board. Dude, I love that though. <laughs> it's actually a really necessary. It's fill 30 right seconds and I have a PA in my classroom. So they have to have the mic. Cause I tell them right off the bat, smart. You are going to have a microphone in your hand so many times in your life or you're not and you want to oh what a what a good you were the one you were chosen to present something to accept something to uh introduce something to mc to uh say something in a captive audience (laughs) <laughs> most importantly they can't get away you know <laughs> and so what better place to cut your teeth than with a, a 30 kids that you known for eight years no and there's nothing like there's nothing and, like teenagers to that's like teenagers uh, to, to 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 ease the fall to listen to, i think i did this i think i'm doing these same uh stories because i think i said this on another pod but let me tell you you, you want to hear the best uh, jokes that my kids have done since I've done this unit. I do. I think I've told this one, but it so. bears repeating. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I love this opener. Yeah, things are going all right. <laughs> so pro, right? A kid did, like, that. A kid yeah, did that. So yeah, a kid did that. She's uh, thirteen. She's like, yeah, things are going all right, and then just like a pause. <laughs> <laughs> like she's grizzled. That's she said, brilliant. it's brilliant. And she said, yeah, uh, things are going all right. I just came back from the uh, doctor, though. And I did was diagnosed with as colorblind. That came right out of the purple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using that. I'm using it in the KP. I came right out of the purple. <laughs> did people laugh? Did the kids like it? Uh that one did I feel okay. Like kids, that I feel one like did kids okay. Kids are always a beat about, beat behind. Like, huh? well, that's the whole thing. They are. I mean, and so that one, uh, the next ones didn't land, but they're among my favorite. Well, I have Here's, to. I have to tell the audience something. You ready? Yeah. Ninety. 4.7 see I'm, I'm going new world like like people love it 94.7 percent of you in a recent poll said <laughs> that you'd basically hate uncle seth but if you guys ever ever had one of your kids in his classroom 98.9 percent of you would say thank god i got this as guy as a teacher it's uh, weird it's weird he's amazing i, I would say teacher. that if i had your child you would uh i treat try to be for my kids uh who i want for my uh for my kid i mean for my i try to be for my students who i'd want for that's right for my kid but you so, do it. i've seen you yeah i mean 
It's freaky, yeah. guys. You're right. This is so where- So check it out. A lot of you guys who like me as your teacher, you just wouldn't want to hang out with me. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> well, a lot of the guys on the pod, listen to the pod right now. I can actually picture half of them, which is right. bode slash, well for my audience. Slash want to kick my <laughs> Well, they're like, that guy, he's, he'll say one thing and then he'll say another. It's not consistent. And I kind of, I always want to go to people who hey, tell me that. Hey, people, people. It's not- not consistent it's not consistent nothing's consistent anyway nothing is consistent and if it was as dostoevsky says if everything was exactly consistent then human beings would break it because they don't Listen, want that if if i were don't want to be consistent I, if i were consistent i would be giving up on life i'm working hard i'm trying to uh figure things out uh there's no way you could have come to i'm 55 i'm 56 this year uh, you, nice. there's no way you could come to this age and, uh, be somebody who figured it out. There's no way you, you get no. less, you get, you get you less, get less figured less out about these things. Yeah. Correct. Well, let me put it differently. You gain wisdom and the wisdom is, is I don't really know how that works. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which is crazy. All right. Um, where were we? Well, I, I know that you were flying the pine tree flag. <laughs> Put that up, Andrew. The pine tree flag. Do you guys know what that is? The pine tree flag. I learned about it from Seth. Uncle Uncle Seth was because apparently is it Samuel Alito? Yeah, one of the Supreme Court justices was flying the pine tree flag, which I think you did I'm a not, deep dive. I'm actually, on. I'm actually not even pissed. Well, okay. What is your perspective, guys? The pine tree flag. If you don't know what it is, it's a revolutionary era flag of a pine tree that is supposed to point sort of to heaven and all of us, the flag is to remind us, what, what was the phrase? I've got it up here. Let me see. What's the phrase that uh, was a flag used in it featured- Faith, the, it's very faith-based. An appeal to heaven, heaven or an appeal to God. So if you see someone flying the pine tree flag, then that They're person- They're appealing to God. Is like, you know, like some people put like, sadly, like they put like, like the New York Jets flag in front of their house. That's, and listen, that's tough. It's funny but, that you think it's sad, but that this is the same thing as having like uh, JC on the flag and you, you, you put, hang a flag in front of your house. Well, I, says, I have a cross. I have, I have St. Nino's cross hanging on my door. So do you think that is similar? The cross and then the flag? Would you put a, uh, 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 a flag with Jesus's picture on it? In front of your house? Well, let me put it like this. Oh, wait a minute. And why Why do you have no. to put it some way? Would well, I'll, <laughs> no, I would not put a oh, picture. Oh, that sucks. Hold on. A picture? Hey, you, hey everybody on the pod, you've been fall, following a false prophet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you, I mean, you got to give me a chance. My people know. I would not put a picture like like jump shot Jesus, no. but I would put an <laughs> icon of Christ, and I what? have over my door. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not talking but about that. Like, but it has a purpose. And this is what I love about Orthodox iconography. It's not a picture. You're not, you're not trying to demonstrate. You're trying to it, use it. And so it's a blessing that you venerate as you enter your house in order to remember that your house is a temple. So, yeah, I would put an icon, a flag where I'm like, this is what I stand for. No, I don't think go. I'm doing that. I don't there think I'm go. doing that. Oh, That's I did the, the wrong voice. Hey, listen, the wrong the, voice? The, no, no, it's perfect. Because the essence of Christianism is this is what I stand for. That is interesting. Somebody, some might say that about essence of Christianity. Hey, yo. Or just the essence of, oh, here's the word you hate, faith. I mean, you have a faith. Let me ask you something. Let's see what would be in front of your house. <laughs> this is the problem, guys. This is what Nihil looks like. Um, <laughs> Nih- Nihil. I can go stuff. I can go I'm surprised stuff. you even have a house. Do you even have a door? You're like, I don't believe in doors. I don't believe in blocking things from things. <laughs> this is what it looks like at Neil Isms house. <laughs> Guys, this is my friend 40, Neil. This is Neil Ism. Uh, this is Mister Is. It, it, it's, it's like remember the Bart Simpson. Oh, look, there's uh, his cute Mr., Is Mister? Um, you remember when Bart Simpson would make calls to the bar to Mo, <laughs> right? You know, and then whatever's like is uh, 
well, I don't want to say that one. That's inappropriate, but I'll do this one. Uh, is, well, he did do this one. I wish he had done. Is Mr. Ism there? First name, Neil. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> no, no, no. First name, Neil. Dude, that's you. So is I guess the Mr. Appropriate- Ism here is Neilism. So this is a, actually, this is helpful. So you would not put a picture of Jumpside Jesus. You would not put, would you put a picture of your daughters over the door? That would be the first. Uh, I mean, if I were into like, so Who you I are. think when people, yeah, when people fly flags, they not only that's who they are, but they are dying for people to know that's who they are. All right. So different question. What if a flag magically, let's just call it, let's just say it's a bluish flag. If the flag magically, it's a blue why is flag. Bluish? Why is bluish? It blue? I don't know. It's, it feels like right for you. Baby blue. So it's a baby blue flag. I don't know. Whatever color you want to make it. But it does this weird thing where it snaps in the wind and it scares away all the mosquitoes. Then you would fly it because it has utility. Bingo. Because <laughs> it makes your world more comfortable or something. Bingo. And then they would go, that guy, he flies the mosquito flag. He's he's into. You things. know what? What better? Yeah. Because uh, so people would know that there's a guy who uh, believes that a flag is. Uh, it, it has some uh, meaning and purpose rather than. I'm flying the, uh, you know, the Michigan flag the identity at, on flag. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, identity flag. Well, I'm here's not trying a fun for that, too. man. Here's a fun thing, too, guys. From what I can tell from this conversation right now, I bet Seth also doesn't put any salt on his food because food's just supposed to give you nutrients. What do you just drink, like, shakes all day? Dude, what's wrong with life for you? Like, it must be boring as hell. <laughs> that Michigan like- steak, that Michigan flag is like salt to John, people. Honestly, it is. It is. Like, you spice have it up to have a little some, bit. Right? Some <laughs> college allegiance. But, like, the only thing that says Seth doesn't have, like, Netflix and everything, all he has is that one channel you guys have all seen. It's that one, that's that one app channel, which is like lectures 23,000 <laughs> hours of lectures. You could learn anything in an hour. So it's like that has, that has, per, that has like, ooh, legit, I'll stop here. <laughs> like practical knowledge. By well, the way, listen. that actually works for you because you're the guy that like takes the fire, the fireman de- department exam just to see if you can pass it. Why not? You are ridiculous. All right. So did we, I would just argue about law before we get to the end of this. I want to say this. I think we've been debating in a weird way, revolu- revelation and reason. So I think there's a revealed reality seen by human beings. It's possible. And the ultimate eye is not the eyes of your head, but it's the eyes of your heart. And they see things. And I think you even think there are people who can see things that aren't. But what I'd say is that law trumps all the other laws. I don't know that that means I would force others to live under a revealed law, but I sure wouldn't let the rational laws that you love so much trump those in my own world. And I would stand there and get hit in the head or killed in order to live according to the beauty of the the revelation. What do you think about that? How would no? They are trumping them in your own world because again, you are creating laws for people that do not. Uh, th- for people who are not on your team, you think you- they're on your team. I, I no, hold on. I agree with that. There's a, but can we can we do a red line? Although I don't know a red line right now with Biden and stuff. But I just need to see twenty thousand more dead people. Then we'll have a red line. But here's the thing: there is oh, it's, a line. It's, hey, it's political commentary on the race. Biden. Cancel. Cancel. Uh, cancel. Cancel. Sorry, I. I'm just pissed about that. But let's can I get a quick uh I wish we can coin something like a quick data short. Yeah, let's many, call how, it that. Let's here's a quick it. data short. Dun, 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 many, dun, 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 data short. But uh, how many people right now listening to this would you think are voting for Trump? Percentage. And then we'll just keep going on. I don't want to stay on it. Dun, 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 data short. Data uh, short. 
I, I don't think it's Matt. Oh, no, I, you, I think you it's qualified. 30, you, in, in 32 the day- out of 100 okay. on this show. All right, now let's move 32 on. 32 listeners. Let's move on. Cause, okay. How many do you think that listening to this podcast are going to vote for Trump? Is this a data short right back at me? It's like a reverse. Then we go light people, data short. 72. Whoa, you think 72 out of 100 of these listeners on this podcast are going to vote for Trump? 100%. Wow. 100%. And 90%, it works. 75%. Put it in the comments. We should have put this at the top. Andrew, put this right at the top because this is interesting. On this pod, heavy lightly, which by the way, we're still getting we still getting upticks. People are listening. Here's the question, Uncle Seth. That's a lot of people. I know a lot of these Orthodox or let's no, just you're call saying, them old you're, world yeah, people. They listen, don't even listen. want to go down to the voting no, booth. I'm talking about the people that do go to the bo- voting booth. Oh, wait a minute. So there's a hundred percent of heavy things lightly listeners. You think of those a hundred, seventy two will vote. Of the hundred percent of like people who things, vote, listeners who vote, seventy two percent will vote for Trump. All right, all right. That was not, oh, that was not my number. I'm just oh, talking about. Oh, come on! Just put a hundred people in a no. room. Most of the, my cats aren't voting. Yeah, no, obviously. But I think that's pretty weak for you to chicken out you there. You do? Yeah, I do. I do. Because here's what Why you try you to do. Why would you value voting? You listen. You're people. in a conversation with a new worlder, okay? Correct. So what? What? What you always try to do is uh, disassociate you, the the real orthodox, from the the, the fakers, fakers, the posers. So you just think that's not a distinction. There is no distinction. Uh, just, not in the voting booth. It's binary. You, in the voting booth, I don't give a shit what your uh, your backstory is. Why do I gotta is, go? Man. Why do I gotta go? I don't get that part. <laughs> well, you don't have to go. I'm talking about a bunch of people who are. I'm talking about the people who are going. What? what yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Seventy-two percent. So I get. So all right. But here's you're what you're not saying. saying. You're not value. You're not putting a value judgment on whether they go or not. But of the ones on this podcast listening who do go, okay. Correct. You think, and they're pulling the lever. Pulling the lever, yes or you no. You think 72 Up of those down. people will pull the lever for Trump. Yeah. What's your number now? Oh, uh, well, that's a whole different number. No, uh, they give it to her right now. The data shorts, and they got there's a, too long in the data shorts. If we're going to sell this as a gimmick... I like give it, it right now. Number. Uh, it's the first number you have to come up with. 68. Oh, my God. They're you pulling. Went four they're, different from me. They're pulling. Come on. Yeah, I guess 12. 12. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared to say. I, I but it's probably over 50. It's probably over 50. It's probably over 50. Here's the whole thing. You said in the comments, uh, people put their number. but Yes, put their number. Yeah, put put your number for sure. But again, no. The number is out of a hundred. How many listeners on this thing will who vote? That's an ad. That's an addition. Well, Guys, put your fact, number. How many out of a hundred who vote? We can do. No, I don't even think so. Uh, we can do if you want to do it both combined. You know, but the nice thing is no voting. You get zero percent <laughs> factored in with the whatever number. So it would be about 30 something. Correct. You know, because you, that's right. Because you're valuing. OK, now let me ask you, do you value the fact let, let me put it this way? A hundred percent of your people out of a hundred people in your world, how many of those people will go to the voting booth? The the, the people that I have. You're out light with. people. Yeah, you're light people. Vin or and just light cats. people. Okay. And no, I love wait. Vin. Vin, much love. Oh man. Vin. I love He's Vin. roasting you. Yeah, he uh, is. I don't care. I love him though. It doesn't I, wait, matter. Wait, wait. He'd still wait. invite me to his house. Okay. He'd still invite me to his daughter's wedding. I maybe. Know. Maybe it's iffy. He um, would if he had room. Well, yeah, if some other no, people like he's got to have, and he had to move the fish, he will. He, <laughs> he will get you there. Whatever, I don't care. Vin's nice, but go ahead. He's the best. A hundred of your light people are going. Yeah. Um, uh, no, a hundred people are there in the room. How many are pulling the lever first uh, for Trump? No, let me put it this way: How many are just pulling a lever? 
out of your 100 light people? Here's the thing. No, you're no, you're you got to answer data short. Uh, no, uh, here's where I have to. We have to also have a data short exemption right here or clarification. I gave you a small pool, not all all uh, old uh, uh, old people. You did heavy school. things lightly. Listen, I did on the podcast right now. This is like, and now you're it. saying all the light people. So if you want to ask, oh, uh, okay, people, all right, hang let me out go, with. Okay, you have to narrow uh, it down. That's fair. That's fair. Um, let's make the, make, turn your school's staff into a hundred people. Got it. Cause you hang with them. I know yep. that you're not besties, but whatever. Oh, that's a good one. Make your school staff a okay. hundred, whatever that is. How many of them are first pulling the lever? Just, just going to the booth for the cadaver. Oh, oh, how much are just pulling just the pulling, lever? First of all. Yeah. Uh, well, teachers. Yeah. They're. Yeah, they're teachers, I mean, administrators, whatever. Yeah, no, education, like 95%. Oh, 95% of your sort of light people, educators. Okay, now, Correct. So out of that 100, not 95, out of that 100, how many are pulling for the cadaver? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who really, it's weird, because one day he's doing good, and the next day somebody forgot that one pill. <laughs> they got it. He, they forgot the boost embalmment. <laughs> Who's, uh, how many are pulling for El Cadaver? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say about uh, out of that 90 whatever percent, uh, I'll say about 75 uh, percent probably. Dude, that is so No, low. Oh, wait, I take this back. I take it back. Because, what? again, it's the education. I'm talking about nine, probably 90 percent. Yes. But, what, Okay, but I'll tell you now what the other pool would be. People in my neighborhood, a lot of people who make a lot of money um, from, from not from Chicago. Chicago, y'all. Chicago, Not y'all. from Chicago. They're all from Michigan. And they're yeah, they finance people, whatever. Yeah, that's right. And so around here, you know, definitely I would say about, and I, I kind of know because I know these people. Um, I would say like 70% would pull for the cadaver. Correct. So 30% in this bastion of liberalism. Would go Trump? Yeah. I believe it. Seth, so will you come back when, when I get back? From, I got to travel this month. Will you come back maybe in July and, and do it or in August? Yeah, let's do it. I'll be on uh, vacation mode so I can do it at two in the afternoon. You name it. I think we should do one maybe on like holidays and how. Like, I think we should do one in the a daytime pod. Oh, you know, like maybe, maybe outdoor. Maybe uh, we. Uh, <laughs> you call in from a boat or something. Yeah, right. Exactly. Just like a mini hit. Right now, I can hear my mini pod. Like, because I know everybody that's listened for an matter. hour. Sorry about that, guys. You know, I'll I'll tell you what happens. Sometimes we come on and we have an idea sometimes we come on idea. and just like well that was fine but uh <laughs> but it always goes off on tangents and that's i can't help it for myself I, I think it's the opposite i think the tangents are the gold don't you think there's like a cheesy i think there's a cheesy progressive like idiom for this like don't forget the journey starts yeah, as soon as you I get don't... off the path yeah but i don't want to be on a cheesy idiom I want to be on the path. I know. I love to make all that stuff yours whenever I see. Because you got to admit, there's some crazy stuff on your end. There's some crazy stuff. By the way, I noticed the whole the gender craze has slowed down. Maybe that's our next conversation. <laughs> Maybe the gender craze. You want to go gender? Well, dude, you guys, you really need to, the gender craze has to end now. We, we got it. We got it. You can be anything you want to be except for that. So Here's the whole thing. What happens is this. People always, uh, after putting up a big front, then they say, we got it. If you had just said you got it in the beginning, it wouldn't have been a craze. It I becomes know. a I craze know. to <laughs> fight against people who are fighting against something. <clears throat> You're going to own that? You're going to own that? Uh, if you saw my face on that, guys, this, <laughs> this is not the time. Uh, Disdain. It's not the time. I, uh, I wish you the best. Hey, everybody. Thanks again. Uh, great to hear from everybody. 
Um, I'm going to try to make it to one of these gigs. Dude, you are actually a beloved character in this corner of this little corner of the world. It's, it's a fact. Uh, I don't, we don't get into like deep personal stuff between me and you, but it's fact that you're a beloved by our family and also by me. And I am thankful to hear from you. And often I'm thankful even when you don't make sense. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm always <laughs> thankful, even when you don't make sense. <laughs> so Although anything, he was pretty good. So he, we agreed not to go too hard on Shmamortian, and you didn't. <laughs> so. I didn't. But maybe, I think it's about time, people. Next pod, like a straight, I mean, because we always talk about it, but there should be some deeper looking into this. You want to? Yeah, maybe. Let's try it. Let's think about it. Anyway, I love you, man. I'll talk to you. I right, in- love you. Good night, everyone. Do you guys ever feel like when we're talking to Uncle Seth that the heavens are going to open up and somebody's getting swallowed? And some days it's me. Guys, there's this integrity factor when you do interviews. I don't care even if it is with Uncle Seth. There's an integrity issue. And I talked about it with Richard Rowland. I think it was Richard. Maybe it was him, Stephen Roach. You get like taffy. You get pulled. And then you start to wonder if you're actually saying the truth. And then... In some ways, you want to get pulled to the point of dissolution because you want to be able to follow the person you're interviewing to where they where they are. You want to be in their shoes. But you wonder sometimes, uh-oh, do I have any shoes left? Do I have my own shoes? Have I lost them? I think there's a bunch of people that fear that. I don't fear that. That's probably a problem. On the other hand, it's Uncle Seth. I think one of the answers when you love somebody or when you love, what happens is it chases out fear. Guys, thanks for listening. I would love for each of you to support First Things. And some of you have heard this before and you haven't done it. And that's okay. It's not like your salvation depends on it. (laughs) But it's actually not. Uh, Sure is cool, though, to be able to take your dough and turn it into something like the opportunity to help others. So check us out, www.first-things.org. And I want to thank everybody that works at our organization. They're incredible people. They've given a lot for very little. They continue to. Field workers and our executive staff, they give a lot for a very little. Peace out. See you next week on Heavy Things Lightly.